Hello students, in this video we'll prove the spherical law of sines. The context we're going to use is we're going to look at the unit sphere. So here's our unit sphere. And I'm going to use the fact that if I want to find the distance between two points on the unit sphere, so that's a point D on the unit sphere, and here's a point E on the unit sphere, which we can represent as vectors, D and E, then the shortest path between two points is the arc that's on the great circle between D and E. So the arc of the great circle and the great circle is the intersection of the plane through D, E, and the origin, and the sphere. So the arc of that great circle is the shortest distance between D and E. Okay? Great. Now what we can do is we can say, okay, so if this angle over here is an angle of theta, well then if I'm on the intersection, if I'm on a great circle, the great circle is going to have radius 1. Great circles have radius 1. They're an intersection of the plane with the plane through the origin with the points D and E. Well, if you don't believe that as radius 1, the equator is one such great circle. And if I rotate the equator, I can get that to be in any configuration I want, so that other great circle also has to have radius 1. Okay? So that tells me that I'm on an ordinary circle of radius 1, so this arc over here has, is going to have a length of theta, since we're on an ordinary circle. Now I can compute what theta is as saying that the cosine of theta is going to be vector d dot vector e. Likewise, I can say that the sine of theta is going to be the length of d cross e. E, the length of the cross product. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to find, I'd like to put a great circle. I want to draw three points on this sphere and then form a, great, a couple great circles. So if this is the point A on the sphere, if this is the point B on the sphere, and this is the point C on the sphere, there's going to be a point B, there's going to be a point C. I'm going to draw the great circle between A and B, the great circle between B and C, and the great circle between A and C and I'm going to get a geodesic triangle. So this is a geodesic triangle. On this geodesic triangle, this is going to be the length C. That's the side length. That's the arc length away from C. The arc length away from point B is going to be B, and the arc length away from A is going to be A. Now, the angle over here between at that vertex A is going to be alpha, the angle of the vertex B is going to be beta, and the angle of the vertex C is going to be gamma. Now what is alpha? So alpha is the angle between the planes through the first plane is going to be through what? It's going to be through the origin A and B. The origin A and B. The second plane is going to be through the origin A and C. So the planes that I get from those great circles that intersect at the vertex A of this geodesic triangle is going to be the definition of what the angle A is going to be. And we have the origin. I'm going to have A and C. A and C. Now I know what the normal vectors to these planes are. The normal vector to the first plane, N1, is going to be A cross B over the length of A cross B. And this, of course, I made it a unit vector now. And the normal vector for the second plane, we put a hat in there since it's a unit vector, is going to be A cross C over the length of A cross C. Okay, good. And so now, what is going to be the sine of this angle theta? It's going to be the length of the cross product of these two things. So the sine of alpha, sine of alpha, is going to be the length of n1 hat cross n2 hat. Let's pull it out and see what we're going to get. So if we do this, what will we have? We are going to have, so the sine of alpha for us, sine of alpha is going to be the length of a 
cross B cross A cross C over, now let's think carefully, what is the length of A cross B? The length of A cross B is going to be what? It's going to be the angle between A and B. So if I look between A and B over here, what side length is that? That's C. So the vectors A and B are going to subtend this arc of length C. So over here, this is really the sine of C. That's the sine of C. And this thing over here is really what? Between A and C, that's going to be the sine of B. So I'm going to have the sine of B, the sine of C in my denominator. And now we have to simplify the norm of this numerator over here. So let's recall the back cab identity. The back cab identity says A cross B cross C is back. So B and then A dot C minus C and then A dot B. So let's apply back cab to our numerator over here and see what we get. So the numerator over here is going to be the length. Now my a, I'm going to have what my, what my vector b is going to be is going to be a. So I'm going to have vector a, that's my b. And then I'm going to have a, which is this thing, a cross b, and then dot c, which is going to be itself, just c over here. Great. And then minus c, so minus c, minus c. And then what thing am I going to have over here? I'm going to have a dot b. So I'm going to have a cross b dot a. But a cross b dot a is equal to 0. So this term over here is gone because a cross b dot a is 0. So and of course, the length of a, if I pull the length of a out, this is just a scalar. That's just a triple scalar product. So the length of a is on the unit sphere. That's just going to be 1. So then the denominator, I still have a what? I still have a sine of b sine of b, sine of c. So that tells me that the sine of alpha, I'm going to put the sine of alpha, I'm going to divide that by the sine of a. The sine of a. It's going to be what? It's going to be absolute value of a cross b dot c, the triple scalar product, over, I put a sine of a in this denominator, I better put a sine of a in that denominator too. Sine of a, sine of b, sine of c. So the sine of alpha over the sine of a is the triple scalar product of the vectors a, b, and c over the sine of a times the sine of b times the sine of c. Notice that this expression over here is perfectly symmetric in a, b, and c. This is symmetric in a, b, c, a, b, c. And so that says that this expression, if I change the roles of a, b, and c, it won't be affected at all. So this expression is also equal to, so the sine of alpha over the sine of a is equal to the sine of beta over the sine of b by symmetry is equal to the sine of gamma over the sine of c. And this is the spherical law of sines. So there is our spherical law of sines. Thank you very much.